This video was made possible by Mizizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit MiziziShop.com for more information. The African Union Summit is essential to foster unity and solidarity among member states, provide a platform to define and articulate a shared vision for Africa's future, find common ground on issues, and take action. But most importantly, it serves as a critical forum for African leaders to discuss the most pressing issues impacting Africa, from political instability and conflict to economic challenges like poverty and unemployment. This way, African leaders can pool their expertise and resources and strive to find collective solutions that benefit the entire continent. In light of this, the upcoming 37th African Union Summit in Addis Ababa is a most puzzling one, since none of the continent's most pressing issues feature in its provisional agenda. Instead, leaders at the summit are expected to discuss less pressing matters. Why is this happening? What matters will be discussed at the summit instead? And what does this development say about the African Union and its leadership? In today's video, we will shed more light on these questions and many more. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. Discussions at the African Union Assembly's 37th Ordinary Session, set to take place in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, from Saturday, February 17, 2024, to Sunday, February 18, 2024, are expected to be as bland as the official name of this weekend's Heads of State meeting. This is because according to the summit's provisional agenda, leaders converging in Addis Ababa for the summit will not be discussing the continent's most pressing problems, but will instead be talking about the African Union's structural reforms, budgetary concerns, an internal audit that revealed inconsistencies, multilateral cooperation, economy and commerce, programs and conferences, education, science and technology, gender issues, and the conclusion of the Intra-African Commerce Fair in Cairo in November 2023. They will also be discussing the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, institutional reform, the operationalization of the Peace Fund, the status of the Pan-African Parliament, and Agenda 2063, a wide-ranging 50-year strategic blueprint for Africa's socio-economic transformation into a global powerhouse that the African Union adopted in 2013. According to reports, Rwandan President Paul Kagame intends to submit the final report on African Union reform, while his Ivorian counterpart Alassane Ouattara will assess the first decade of Agenda 2063 and establish goals for the next 10 years. Sierra Leone's Julius Mata Bio will discuss the activities of the African Peer Review Mechanism, which is chaired by Algeria's Abdel Majid Taban. Furthermore, Egypt's Abdel Fattah Al Sisi will summarize the African Union Development Agency's activities before South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa delivers a presentation on the African reaction to the COVID-19 problem. Ramaphosa will then report on the coordinated effort on gender equality alongside Ghana's Nana Akufo Addo, recommending methods to improve women's freedom. Kenya's William Ruto will also provide the report of the heads of state and government on climate change. However, conspicuously absent from the African Union's agenda are the myriad of pressing security and humanitarian crises plaguing the continent. The Tigray War in Ethiopia, simmering since 2020, hits the Ethiopian government against Tigrayan forces. Ethnic tensions, grievances over political representation, and access to resources fueled the clash, displacing millions and causing a humanitarian crisis. While a ceasefire exists, fragile peace hangs in the balance, leaving scars on the nation's social fabric and economy. Then there's the Sudan conflict, caused by a power struggle between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces that started in April 2023. The UN Humanitarian Affairs Office estimates that over 12,000 people have been killed, with about 5.9 million displaced within the country, making it the largest internal displacement crisis globally. Furthermore, the conflict in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, 
is also worth mentioning. The Eastern DRC conflict has ignited tensions between the DRC and Rwanda. This is because the DRC accuses Rwanda of backing the M23 rebels, citing their resurgence and proximity to Rwandan borders. Rwanda denies these claims, but its past involvement in the region and differing strategies from regional blocs fuel suspicion. These crises have generated tensions within regional blocs, notably between the East African Community, or EAC, and the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, in the war against the M23 insurgency in DRC's North Kivu province. We cannot also look past what is happening in West Africa. ECOWAS, the regional bloc designed to promote peace and stability, is struggling under the weight of multiple challenges. The recent spate of coups in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have exposed deep frustrations with democratic failures and fueled public anger over insecurity and economic hardship. The subsequent withdrawal of these junta-led countries from ECOWAS has left the bloc with less leverage and influence, further hampering its ability to mediate and resolve crises. Compounding these issues is the worsening security situation in the Sahel region, where jihadist groups continue to expand their reach and exploit existing grievances. Despite ECOWAS efforts to deploy joint military forces, the conflict shows no signs of abating, further straining resources and testing the bloc's resolve. Additionally, the recent postponement of Senegal's presidential election throws another curveball into the mix. This unexpected development raises concerns about potential political instability and undermines the democratic transition within a traditionally stable nation. If tensions escalate, it could further fracture regional unity and divert attention from existing crises. Consequently, amid all these challenges, many experts agree that it is indeed puzzling for the African Union to converge at a summit and choose to discuss routine issues like budgets and structural reforms instead of addressing the myriad of crises plaguing the continent. This has prompted widespread questioning of the African Union's relevance, as it appears disconnected from the immediate needs of African nations. The African Union is also being accused of deliberately ignoring the issues at hand for strategic reasons. For instance, the 37th summit is being held in Ethiopia, a country that has either launched or been involved in many conflicts during the last three years, and many are calling out the African Union's reluctance to take on Ethiopia. The African Union's reluctance to criticize Ethiopia, despite various internal and external issues, can be traced to Ethiopia's strong American partnership. Indeed, the country's long-standing alignment with the U.S., including its support for the Iraq War, grants it strategic importance. This influence creates hesitation among both internal and external actors to confront Addis Ababa, fearing potential repercussions or jeopardizing relations with the U.S. Some experts also argue that Ethiopia's historical role in supporting African liberation movements fosters a sense of reluctance among other African nations to criticize it, even in the face of potential wrongdoing. The muted stance of the African Union on Ethiopia's internal issues has come under scrutiny, with many accusing the organization of strategically refraining from addressing Ethiopia's challenges for an extended period. Further criticism is directed at the African Union's track record of supporting aging dictators at the expense of civil liberties, raising concerns about its commitment to fostering democracy and human rights. African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat is also under heavy scrutiny for his leadership style, with critics pointing to his perceived inability to influence major events, limited engagement in conflict prevention and resolution, and the weakening of the organization's global voice in the face of accelerating global multilateralism. As the African Union grapples with these critiques, the conspicuous absence of crucial crises from the summit agenda not only raises questions about the organization's immediate effectiveness, but also casts doubt on its long-term ability to proactively address the pressing issues confronting the African continent. The decision to prioritize bureaucratic matters over urgent political and security concerns underscores a growing perception of a misalignment between the African Union's priorities and the real-time needs of the diverse nations it represents. 
This disconnect contributes to a broader narrative questioning the African Union's responsiveness and adaptability in a rapidly evolving geopolitical landscape. The organization's credibility is further eroded as it seems to sidestep critical issues in favor of less contentious topics. This not only fuels skepticism about the African Union's capacity to act decisively, but also underscores the necessity for a comprehensive revaluation of its operational mechanisms and leadership approach to ensure it remains a relevant and impactful force in addressing the complex challenges facing the continent. Your perspective matters. What do you make of the upcoming African Union Summit that will focus on less important issues instead of the pressing security and humanitarian crises facing the continent? Share your insights and thoughts in the comments below. For continued updates on global affairs and diplomatic developments, be sure to subscribe to the new Africa channel. Stay informed, stay engaged. Thank you for watching and we look forward to bringing you more insightful content in the future.